In today's OpenGL demo, I'm showing off the start of a voxel game or a voxel engine. So as you can see here, we have this world here. It's divided into multiple chunks, and each chunk has this staircase pattern. So if we fly over here, we can see that each chunk is made of a bunch of blocks, and each block can have a different texture. So the top block is grass, then everything else is dirt. And then if we show off in our code how this works, we have in our main file, we create a world and then we draw the world and we set the player position in the world. And the world is a class right here that holds a player location, a world data, which is a unordered map of ints and char pointers or chunk pointers, sorry, and then a render distance. And the render distance and player location aren't really implemented yet, but it still works without those. And then we have four functions. We have add chunk, delete chunk, draw, and set player position. So when we add a chunk, we get that unordered map. We take an int of x, and we simply create a new chunk there, and we allocate it in memory. Then. For deleting a chunk, we do the same thing. We do world data dot erase x. And then for our draw function, we go through all of the chunks in world data, and we draw each of them to the screen. And based on the key, we just determine its position. So a key divided by eight determines the x axis, and eight key divided by eight remainder determines the z-axis. Then we have a constructor which simply says for each number from 0 to 64 create a chunk and our deconstructor just simply deletes all chunks. Now what is a chunk? So it's this class right here. It stores a 3D array of bytes so 8-bit integers and it holds 32 by 32 by 32 it has a cube VAO, VBO, and instance VBO, and then it has a vector of translations. So in this code, when we create a chunk, we first fill up all the chunks uh, data with some numbers. So zero represents error, and that's if y plus z is greater than 31. So that gives us that staircase effect. If it's exactly 31, we set it to a grass block. Otherwise, we set it to a dirt block. Then we set up visible blocks, which is a function down below. Then we generate an instance VBO. So this allows us to do instancing so that each chunk is only one draw call, which makes it significantly more performant. And we base it on translation size and data, which I'll show in a second. Then we create a regular cube VAO and VBO, and we initialize it with these values here. So first three are the positions, the text chords, and then the normals. And then in our setup visible blocks chunk, what we do is we get this boolean should draw, and then for each block, so all the x, y, and z's, we check. So if it's an air block, we set should draw to false. If it's a, if it's not an air block, but it's a bordering block, we set it to true. Otherwise, we have this massive boolean, which basically says, is each block around it transparent? And if it is, it's false. Or no, it's true. And if all the blocks around it aren't transparent, then it is, shouldn't be rendered. And if it should be drawn, we push, we push that back to translations. And translations is this big, where is it, right here? This vector of GML vect4s. And what we use that for is the instance shader. So we pass in that as our data. And then in a draw function, we draw instance to raise. So we draw a triangles, 0, 36. So this is one cube. And we draw a number of cubes equal to translation.size. And since that's our instance buffer, we only draw cubes that should be drawn. And then in we have the cubes. So what they are is we have this block class, which is actually just a static class. So it has no storage of its own because it's all stored inside the bytes in the chunk. And this has cube vertices as a pointer, 
cube vertice size, text size, draw block, draw block instances, cleanup, and is transparent. So is transparent just returns if the block ID is zero, which is error, but this is so that I can add tr more transparent blocks in the future. And then in our initialize function, we just create this pointer to 288 floats, and this creates all the cube vertices. So these are all the positions, these are all the textures, and then these are all the normals. And then for these, we use in our shader, we have right here, we set up one shader that we use for the whole project, and this is it here. So we also have a texture atlas, which I can show here. So this is the three blocks we have. We have a grass top, a grass side, and a dirt block. And then in here, we take in a position, a normal, and a texture coordinate. And then we also take in an offset, which is that translations from chunk. And in here, we draw some, we draw the vertices at projection times view times model times the position plus the offset. And then we create a block ID by offset.w. So that's what that fourth value in that GML vec4 is for. The first three are x, y, and z. And then we send the block ID in. And then the text coordinate is textcore.x plus the module or the remainder of block ID times texture size. And y is the same thing, but, but dividing. So what this does is that whatever our block ID is, it will move us along in that texture atlas. So we only draw that part, which allows us to not rebind the texture every time we draw a new cube. And we have the special rules for blocks that don't have the same texture on each side. So for right now, it's only that grass block, which basically says if the normal is greater than zero in the Y direction, which means it's facing up, we set it to texture zero. And if it's less than that, which means it's facing down, we set it to texture two, which is the dirt. And then in here, we simply draw it as a texture. And that gives us the result that you can see here. And if we fly inside this chunk, you can see it's actually a hollow chunk because the blocks are filled in there, but since there's no collisions yet, we can sort of just phase through walls and we can see that it doesn't render everything. However, if we, if we did have collisions and you had to break blocks and we updated the function, it would be impossible to tell that those weren't rendering. It just saves the computer time. And now this is an incomplete project. I still have some more optimizations to do and I wanna add some other features such as infinite generation every direction and Perlin noise for terrain generation. So if you wanna see that, subscribe to the channel. I'll probably post it sometime next week. And if you wanna see a complete project, you should click on this video here where I show you how to make a breakout game in C++ and OpenGL. And until next time, see ya.